this is known as miller gubler syndrome miller gubler syndrome the feature are ipsilateral sixth and seventh palsy nerve palsy obviously same side sixth seventh palsy contralateral upper motor neuron feature because this corticospinal tract will go down will cross to other side and that will lead to contralateral upper motor neuron feature so in miller gubler syndrome if she at a 6 7 palsy contralateral upper motor neuron feature are there miller gubler syndrome okay sometime in this patient sometime this patient might have associated lesion of horizontal gaze palsy gaze palsy then that is known as fowell syndrome so fowell syndrome is miller gubler syndrome plus gaze palsy especially the horizontal gaze palsy friend this is the box number 7 regarding the pons so we got two lesion okay miller gubler syndrome ipsilateral 6 7 palsy contralateral upper motor neuron feature fowell syndrome is miller gubler syndrome plus gaze palsy is fowell syndrome so before i go to mid brain all of you revise so in miller gubler syndrome ipsilateral contralateral fowell syndrome is yeah so now we move on to mid brain mid brain first we learn the anatomy cortico spinal tract third nerve this is the red nucleus red nucleus red nucleus this is the superior cerebellar peduncle i hope you remember superior cerebellar peduncle it was by which the mid brain is attached to the cerebellum yeah so this is the third nerve third now this is the corticospinal tract this part of the brain is supplied by branch of posterior cerebral artery posterior cerebral posterior cerebral artery this part of the brain is supplied by posterior cerebral artery structure involved are this is the right side this is the left side right side is corticospinal tract and right side is third nerve structure involved are right sided repeat behind me right sided and right sided third nerve perfect so 
how he will be manifest clinically. Ipsilateral third nerve palsy, contralateral upper motor neuron feature. This is known as Weber syndrome. Weber syndrome. Ipsilateral. Ipsilateral. Contralateral. Ipsilateral third nerve palsy. Contralateral hemiplegia. Why? Because of involvement of corticospinal tract. That is hemiplegia. Previously also, wherever I have written upper motor neuron feature, you can write hemiplegia. Meaning remains the same. Here also you can write hemiplegia. So you can write here also. You can add hemiplegia. Hemiplegia. Ek hi cheez hai. The same thing. Upper motor neuron feature are same as hemiplegia. Or yahan par bhi you can write hemiplegia. So ipsilateral third nerve palsy, contralateral hemiplegia is Weber syndrome. Okay. Yeah. So repeat behind me. Weber syndrome is ipsilateral, contralateral. Perfect. Now we read more anatomy. Here is the left sided cerebellum cerebellum left sided obviously here is the left sided cerebellum and this gave afferent to red nucleus of other side and it get Efferent to cerebellum or red nucleus of other side. So right sided red nucleus having efferent and efferent from cerebellum of other side, contralateral cerebellum. And this part of the brain, this part of the brain is supplied by this part of the brain. Is supplied by another branch of another branch of posterior cerebral artery. So in this case, structure involved are right sided third now, right sided red nucleus. But how he will manifest clinically? Right sided third nerve palsy, but contralateral cerebellar feature because it is getting afferent and efferent from cerebellum. And this is known as Benedict syndrome. Benedict syndrome. Ipsilateral third nerve palsy, contralateral. Cerebellar features. Ipsilateral third nerve palsy, contralateral cerebellar feature, what we see in Bandix syndrome. Okay. So in Bandix syndrome, you get ipsilateral third nerve palsy. And you get contralateral cerebellar feature. I hope things are very clear to you because your anatomy is good. Okay, now leave your pens and look at a board once again. At times, at times, involvement is like third now. This is third now nucleus, third now, and it might involve. So 
superior cerebellar peduncle, red nucleus is not involved. So, sometime third nerve nucleus or superior cerebellar peduncle is involved, this is involved. Artery same PCA. So, structure involved are right sided third nerve, right sided superior cerebral peduncle. Clinically, clinical manifestation will be same. 